The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Little children were being brought to Jesus in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And Jesus laid his hands on the children and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. The two readings today are in some ways in contrast to one another. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus wants to receive the little children, and he says it's to these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. But in Ezekiel, we're talking about children who have grown up, and they're not always as cute after they've grown up, and they don't always do what their parents tell them to do after they've grown up. And the issue becomes, for Ezekiel, what is the relationship, the faith relationship, between one generation and the next? And it's an interesting question because not only did it apply to Ezekiel's time two or 3,000 years ago, but it still applies to our time. At one point in time, for instance, people thought that if one generation was bad, then everybody was punished sort of the Adam and Eve original sin motif. But Ezekiel is saying something different here. He's saying that each generation, in fact, each person, is responsible for their relationship with God. That as much as we may want to teach people the faith, and we do teach them about the faith that we hold, that we believe, It is, in the end, their responsibility for taking it on, for believing, for establishing a relationship with a loving God. And that's the message, really. He says, therefore, I judge you, O house of Israel, all of you, according to your ways, says the Lord God. And like loving parents, God loves us even when we aren't doing so well. God is always waiting for the last word, for the final story, for the ultimate outcome. Sometimes we get frustrated with our children, or in my case, with our students. They don't seem to be able to learn. They don't seem to want to change their ways. But the big story or the longer story may be quite a bit different. God is patient with us as we have to be patient with one another and with each generation. And so as parents and as children, we look to God as our example of loving each generation, each individual, according to their ways. Let us place our prayers before our loving God. Let us pray first of all for all those who are parents, that they may love their children, teach them well, and be patient with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray for all children, that we may be loving of our parents and respect them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in our world, for all those who are striving to bring about peace in the war-torn areas of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray for all who are participating in the Olympics, that they may be safe and may enjoy the fruits of their efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We remember all who have died especially Philippe Espanol, and for all those that God has called unto himself, we pray to the Lord. Lord, And for all the prayers that we hold in our hearts, 
we pray to the Lord. And loving God, we place all our cares and needs in your hands because we know that you love us and you care for us, each generation according to our ways. And we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands and made it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my inequities and cleanse me from my sins. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, our loving creator. And Lord, hear the prayers of your people and receive our gifts. May the worship of each one here bring salvation to all. And grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. And Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him you have renewed all things. And you have given us all a share in his riches. Though his nature was divine, he stripped himself of glory, and by shedding his blood on the cross, he brought his peace to the world. Therefore, he was exalted above all creation and became the source of eternal life to all who serve him. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. And Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, the perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. 